So let's see if we can break a few clays with these guns. Like I said the main gripe uh, people have had with the Benelli M2 is the stiff loading. From the, from the factory, Benelli's, Franke's, uh, all the Beretta family inertia guns, with the exception of the Ethos. But the, uh, the old style, Mine Feltro, uh, certainly uh, M2s and Franke affinities, they are stiff loading. They can give you a sore thumb. So for high volume shooting, for clays, even on the dove field, you're probably not going to like it all that much. But uh, they can be improved. This one has. So it depends on your volume of shooting. And of course it breaks clays. So fun gun. The grand appeal of this gun is very, very low maintenance. And the Comfort Tech stock really does work, particularly with heavier loads, higher intensity loads, ounce and a quarter or up, and the six pound weight, which is just a, it's a great weight, great weight for a field gun. So when that rooster gets up, when you least expect it, you'll be glad you're carrying this. Other than that, um, yeah, they're a little on the pricey side. Benelli's known for that. The main stopper for some people is, is going to be the loading. But for, uh, for hunting wild pheasants, I've never found it to be an issue. I've used it on doves too, but Illinois dove hunting is not like Argentina, so uh, I think the, the, the limit is, uh, I don't know, uh, 13, 13 doves, so we're not talking about a thousand doves at all. So, good reliable gun, not the latest model, still one of my favorite Benelli's. Um, it just uh, in, in, an easy gun as long as you can get past the, uh, it, it, the rattly sound, which has not caused any problems for me in the field, and the somewhat stiff loading. The Browning B80 is a little bit better built than most of the guns you can get today. Smooth, easy loading. An alloy trigger guard rather than just the plastic. And even though uh, the older Breda and Browning autos aren't known for great wood, compared to uh, the crate wood you see on a lot of guns or, or wood with, uh, with goofy enhanced finishes that are that feel plasticky, look plasticky, and are just fake. Um, it actually looks pretty good. I went through a couple B80s just to get a little uh, suspicion of, of fiddle back here. It's still a grade one wood, but there is, there is uh, some grain to it. Jams with target loads of the three inch chambered B80 are to be expected, but we'll see what happens. No jams, but just like before, um, a failure to hold the, the breech bolt open with the last shot. So if you want reliability with three inch chambered guns, shoot one ounce loads. This thing, it is soft shooting. Most of these guns are, but uh, you can really tell the difference going from an inertia gun to this. A few shots doesn't matter, but uh, after, after a case of shells, it does matter. Sooner or later, it's going to matter. Now for the Mossberg SA-20. Uh, of the recent 20 gauges that I've tested, I'll tell you what, I am incredibly impressed with this gun. It's in my estimation right now the best 20 gauge you can get, the best 20 gauge autoloader you can get for under $500. 
really really nice it's straight grain walnut but it is real walnut you've got uh, not highly polished blue but uh, there is certainly a level of polish there. It's, it's a good looking gun good looking gun um, with a, a recoil pad that's more than just ornamental since you have a nice flat cut here you can easily add uh, your favorite whether it's uh, a limb saver, pack mire, um, either the, I haven't tried any prefits, but you can always grind a pad. And you can use a, a thicker pad if you prefer a little longer length of pull as well. And it does come with shims and five choke tubes and a pretty nice case, a nicer case uh, than, uh, than anything else was supplied with, I'll, I'll tell you that. All right, let's break some clays with the SA-20. We'll see how it does. This is one sweet gun. The recoil is almost non-existent. Uh, softest shooting gun of the bunch. I'm, I'm confident in saying that right now. Second would be the B80. Very, very soft shooting. Six and a quarter pounds. Uh, you know, there is a negative to this gun. Nothing's perfect. And that would be it needs a trigger job. Well, the gun's empty, of course. Let me take the safety off. And we'll hang it by the trigger. No click. I realize there's wind here, but uh, if I jiggle it up and down, you hear the click. There we go. So it's a six and a quarter pound gun, but uh, it's about a seven and a quarter, seven and a half pound trigger. It's easily a seven pound trigger, which is just too heavy. However, um, I'm going to send this trigger off probably to precision. I haven't decided yet and get it touched up, get it down to uh, three and three quarter, four pounds, get it down to a good field trigger. Because the rest of the gun is just so darn good. And for the money, you can't beat it. Mossberg's got a real winner here. This is just an outstanding gun. It's an outstanding value for $480, bucks, $490. Walnut, um, soft shooting, no problem with 7 8 ounce target loads. The only thing uh, we've got as a negative is a trigger job, and that can be fixed. I'm going to fix this. But opening day of pheasant season this year in Illinois, well, something really uh, wild changes. This is what I'm going to be carrying. Best sub $500 auto loader on the market that I've ever tested in 20 gauge. So there's just no question about it. If this gun said Browning or Benelli on the side, it'd be a, it'd be a $1,200 gun. But uh, really, really nice. I'm impressed. And it's also easier to load than uh, the Weatherby that has a little wacky shell release there. I'm referring to the um, shell elevator release on the Weatherby SA08. The Weatherby SA08, good guns uh, in 12 or 20. Those are made by ATA. Their 28 gauge is made by the same manufacturer as the Mossberg SA20, which is Armsign. So I'm tempted to say that Armstrong has really stepped up their game. I said outside of the trigger, uh, very good. Even, uh, you'll notice that uh, the bolt is nice and snappy. A lot of these guns have sluggish bolts. Not the case here. So, excellent. I'm impressed. I like the Weatherby Element 20 gauge as well. 
Um, it does have a couple things that I don't like. It also has a heavy trigger. It also has a dinky little safety. I mean, this is really a horribly dinky little triangular safety that uh, there's just no reason for it to be this, this small. Um, it's also a little stiff. But uh, the, the safety size, I think, really could be enlarged, and that would make a lot of people happy. It also has a heavy trigger. This is a six and a half pound gun. Let me jiggle it. So you know the trigger is heavier than six and a half pounds by a little bit. So both the Mossberg and the Weatherby have excessively heavy triggers. I'd say the Mossberg is uh, a little bit heavier, but they're both they're both too heavy, and um, either way, they're both candidates for a trigger job. The safety I can't really fix easily; it's just small and dinky. Um, the Weatherby also I don't know why they do this, but with this this curved recoil pad. You just can't easily change recoil pads. Everybody has their own preference, or many people have their own preferences as far as recoil pads. But you're pretty much stuck with uh, the OEM pad. And the same way with the Franke Affinity, a real goofy notched stock. Anything to avoid having a nice flat uh, recoil pad to make it easy for the consumer uh, to replace pads if they wish. So I don't understand that. That just makes no sense at all. So, um, it is a well-balanced gun. All these guns, except for the Benelli M2, have 26-inch barrels. Like I said, this is a little on the heavy side compared to the rest. It's the heavy weight of the bunch, six and a half pounds. So, it gets to the point, personal preference, uh, if I'm going to carry six and a half pounds, uh, I would probably just fly first class and grab my Fab Arm L4S, which is six and three quarter in a 12 gauge. You're particularly going to want a 12 gauge for wild pheasants if it's no tox and you're using steel. So you got a more versatile gun there. But um, I can't really complain all that much because this gun is easier loading than a far more expensive Benelli. And the bolt isn't nearly as rattly. Uh, it loads uh, butter smooth. And it's a, it's a soft shooting gun as well. So it's a nice gun. Uh, if you're if you want an inertia gun and you don't want to spend uh, Benelli dollars, this is a good choice. You're looking at a trigger job, and you have to make sure that. You can tolerate the factory safety, and you can also tolerate the factory recoil pad. Uh, but other than that, it is a good-looking gun, and as I mentioned before, I like the balance. The balance is very, very nice. The easy loading, everyone's going to like, and the Weatherby Grip tonight is uh, is good, particularly if you've got uh, frozen hands, wet hands, gloved hands. It's got a real nice feel to it. So, I like the 12 gauge a bit better, but still it's a very competent uh, 20 gauge, even if, as a comparison, this would, in, in my view, uh, finish well behind the Mossberg SA-20. I don't think it's ever a mistake to go with a shotgun that fits you the best and narrow it down from there, which is obviously personal because we're not the, all this, we don't have the same length necks, the same shoulder pockets, so there's a lot going on there. But uh, I'll tell you what, people are looking for winners, and as far as I'm concerned, this is the big winner. This is really, really a fabulous job by Mossberg, particularly for the money. 
$480 for a walnut and blue gun with a decent recoil pad, incredibly soft shooting. All it needs is a trigger job and you're set. And it's, it shoulders extremely well, it shoulders fast, it, it moves very, very quickly. Uh, so for pass shooting doves, jump shooting doves, or certainly chasing wild pheasants, I don't think you can do much better than this. You can't do any better than this for the money. So congratulations to Mossberg, because Mossberg uh, is the big winner as far as I'm concerned in this roundup. Thanks for stopping by.